What's up there guys, this is Cobb and welcome to some Overwatch patch notes, namely patch 0.6, which is the build of the game that will be available to play for anyone lucky enough to get into beta testing, which starts in one week's time. I'm doing all I can to stay updated with the game and yesterday I stumbled into these patch notes. Now these aren't official patch notes, but instead of being compiled by somebody who seems to be keeping a very very close eye on the game as it develops. You can find the link down below if you want to check out this post yourself. He also made a similar post on how the game was developing at PAX East a while back. He himself actually includes the disclaimer at the top of his post reading, these are really just meant to be interesting tidbits and changes to Overwatch as it progresses into beta and beyond. These are by no means a complete or accurate account of all of the changes that have been made. So it would be wise to take these notes with a grain of salt, there is definitely some room for inaccuracies and some speculation, but I'm just excited to have more information so for now, let's just get right into it. So first off, starting with something concrete, we have a new map called Dorado. On the pre-beta livestream about a week ago, borrowing some footage here from Eloheim, uh, this was the first map that was played. It is a map set in Mexico and it looks awesome, and um, the piñatas and the lights give it a really festive, unique feel. And it is another payload or escort style map with teams taking turns at attacking and defending, which I really like. The idea of switching sides from attack to defense uh, really instills the importance of this idea of swapping which hero you're playing at the end of rounds, uh, or even during the game itself. And that makes getting good at multiple heroes a really, really big part of the game, and um, both attackers and defenders. So I like the idea of payload maps, mostly because it seems like it's going to reward versatile players, but I will say that there might be a problem with payload maps in general, and I don't think Dorado is an exception. Um, for anyone out there who's played World of Warcraft, might be a few of you, the Strand of the Ancients Battleground has this same problem. And the problem is that if your team loses the first round very, very badly, the second round can sometimes feel pointless or like a guaranteed loss because you or your teammates just feel so outclassed by your opponent's team and that's when you get raging or emo teammates. Now I can't confirm that this is going to happen from time to time, but it is a small worry that I have for Dorado and the other payload maps. Um, I think it's mainly going to come down to how balanced Blizzard's matchmaking system within the game turns out to be. Uh, but regardless, I'm still happy overall to see another payload map. So next on the list we have hero leveling as a form of player progression. Apparently heroes gain levels through being played, allowing them to unlock cosmetic rewards and upgrades further down the line. So what do I expect that this means? We're probably looking at new armor and weapon skins, color variations maybe like in Heroes of the Storm, uh, maybe a few new things like voice packs or new ability animations, for example, like Dota 2 offers. I think my main talking point here is that I really hope that these cosmetic rewards are hard to get. Um, I think it would suck if it was, you know, cool at first, but then within a couple of weeks everyone has the cosmetic upgrades for the heroes that they play the most. I'd actually like to see them go a step further um, and offer cosmetic items that can only be obtained by pulling off some crazy stuff within the game. For example, you unlock a pair of really sick weapons for Tracer, um, if you manage to pull off a 20 player kill streak in ranked mode, and stuff like that, things that really challenge players to push themselves. Obviously, then we might run into boosting services and things like that, making their way into the game, uh, which is hugely, hugely lame, but hey, it is just a thought. Another question that comes to mind reading this is Will there still be armor skins and stuff being sold for real money in a cash shop? I think that this is something that we are all realistically expecting to happen. It's a Blizzard game. And wherever there are skins involved, there is very, very often money as well. I'm okay with this personally, as long as the cosmetic upgrades that you can obtain from leveling your favorite hero cannot just be bought with real money as well. Next up, we have a bit of information on card commendations. Now, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit lost reading this bit. I understand the idea of, uh, you know, commending a player after a game for being friendly or helpful, but here it says that there's going to be four hero cards that you level up by receiving likes, and if you get 10 likes, your card becomes legendary, um, so I guess that means that you become, you know, a legendarily friendly player or something. I honestly don't know, a little bit confused by this. I like that there is a commending feature, uh, and maybe Blizzard is just trying to make theirs a little bit better or more unique than those in other games. Um, no idea why we need a card system for that, but I guess we'll learn more about it when the beta arrives. Next, we have the on fire feature that has been added into the in-game UI, and again, this one was shown during the pre-beta livestream. Basically, if you're destroying everyone on the enemy team or are scoring a ton of objectives, your hero portrait will visibly catch fire. It's a nice little feature to help you stand out amongst your teammates if you're doing really, really well. Um, and it also serves as a warning to the enemy team that they should probably put an end to your awesomeness. So not a bad little feature there. Next up, we have a change to the way that payloads work with the introduction of an overtime meter. What this is going to do is when the game timer expires, the attacking team who are escorting the payload will have a further 5 second countdown timer 
to get the payload to reach its destination. This might not seem very significant, what is a bonus 5 seconds really, but reading on, attacking teammates within the radius of the payload can reset this meter. Now maybe I'm misunderstanding this here, but this seems to mean that a team playing defense on a payload map cannot win the game by just timing out their opponents. As long as an attacking player is alive and is standing within the control radius of a payload, the game will not end and the payload will continue to move towards the victory point for the attackers. So to win the game, the defending team not only has to time out the attacking team, but they also have to wipe them or keep them out of the radius of the payload using slows and knockbacks so that the overtime meter can also tick down from 5 to 0. Maybe I've misunderstood, but I personally love this. Uh, I think it's going to make the payload maps more intense. I can imagine already some insanely close finishes to games where the attackers are just meters away from the victory point and they're just kind of throwing themselves into the payload radius to desperately try and edge a win. And in the meantime, the defending team is doing everything they can to prevent the attacking players from getting near the payload so that the overtime can tick down it's gonna be awesome. And finally, the way that shields work within the game has been changed a bit. Players can no longer charge up their ultimate abilities by throwing damage into shields, and this makes sense. From what little I can gauge from the game, it doesn't make much sense that someone should be able to just tunnel into an enemy player's shield until they can pop their ultimate and get the kill regardless. And um, Likewise, blocking incoming damage with your own shield will also not generate your ultimate. Um, I think that it makes sense, it makes heroes with massive shields less likely to just play like a turtle and it encourages players who are fighting against someone with a shield to use their brains and maybe try and get behind their target instead of just spraying and praying. Last on this list of possibly inaccurate notes are some balancing changes. I'm not going to go into these because with so few of us able to play the game, myself included, uh, they don't really mean a whole lot to read, but I will say that it's encouraging to see Hero Balance being looked at this early on. And that is about going to wrap up this video. Again, these patch notes aren't official, but still, I'm willing to trust them because will we really be that sad if some of them turn out to be false? Um, just about any news on Overwatch is good news if you're on the hype train like me. So I want to thank all of you guys for watching. Remember to subscribe up for a ton of Overwatch stuff as it comes in. And if you're already subscribed, remember to drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Um, so cheers again, everybody. Have an awesome day. Uh, and we're going to catch all of you guys just a tad bit later.